About a week ago, I found this at a thrift store. At first, I had no idea what it was until I turned it around to the back. And then I realized this is just a single board computer on a backplane, which I thought was kind of crazy because I've never found anything like that at a thrift store before. And I looked on the side and I noticed this really long Microsoft license for Windows Server 2003 Telco Server App SW 3.0 1 to 4 CPU really rolls off the tongue. But I actually saw a model number, so I looked it up and I realized that this was actually a VoIP server. This was probably sitting in the back of an office just controlling a bunch of IP phones for its entire life. So I opened up the system and I was greeted with four massive telephony cards. These things are really cool, I might try to use these and play around with them. This also has a SATA RAID card in it made by Promise Technology. And here is the actual computer. More on this later though. I was kind of curious to see if it worked, so I plugged it in, turned it on, and it booted to Windows Server 2003, but then the screen went black and it seemed to not do anything anymore. Now, I've actually seen this in the data center before. This just means that the system's graphical console was disabled. Because the screen went black, I figured there'd probably be a web interface that I could use to control something. But after plugging it into the network, I eventually found the device's IP address, but didn't seem to be any web interface to access. And yes, I did try older browsers, it still didn't work. So I decided to re-enable the console. All you need to do is reboot the system, hit F8 before Windows Start to bring up the advanced options for Windows, and then boot the system in VGA mode. After I did that, I booted right back into Windows Server 2003, and I was actually met with a login screen this time for Windows Server 2003 Standard Edition. I tried logging in, I tried 123 as a password, it didn't work. But then I got the idea. What if I installed Windows 98 and played games on this server? So, this is the actual computer. Very small little thing, isn't it? This is the Advantech PCI 6881 Revision A2. And this board is equipped with a 1.6 GHz Intel Pentium M, 1 GB of DDR1 SODIMM, and an Intel 855 GME chipset which means it has some interesting Intel integrated graphics capabilities. This also surprisingly has gigabit LAN, USB 2, and a whole bunch of stuff really. It even has integrated audio. Although I do not have the add-on card with the mini size connector, it still has it on board, which is cool enough. I was kind of curious on what kind of software was on that drive. So I went ahead and installed Windows 2000 Server to another drive and used that to get all the files off the machine. Why did I use Windows 2000 Server for that? Well, it was the closest Windows 2000 installed disk. It was right next to me. And I was actually glad I did that because a lot of the software that was on there was stuff for the actual telemetry cards. And I do want to play around with those later, so I will be using that. Now that I got everything backed up, before we start installing Windows 98, I'm going to change a few things really quick. One, I'm going to remove a RAM stick. Now we only have 512 megs of RAM, which is basically required to get 98 installed in the first place, because Windows 98 will not install with a gigabyte of RAM. It's just simply incompatible. I also went ahead and removed the telephony cards from the system entirely, just so the Windows 98 setup or potentially the driver pop-ups won't really be too much when we're trying to install the system. And now it's pretty much time to start installing Windows 98. I used FDisk, I went through and I made all the partitions, and I waited for the drive to format, which took forever by the way, and things went really smoothly until it didn't at all. After the machine restarted, we were getting pretty close to actually getting to the desktop, but then the CD-ROM drive started to not even show up at all, and it was trying to get more files from the Windows 98 disk, but it just couldn't get them, so I pretty much didn't have another choice but just to hit cancel on all the files, but then I eventually did get to the desktop, but every time I boot up the system, it's really broken and I have to hit enter a bunch of times to get these messages off my screen, and after those pop-ups, I get a Windows networking error as soon as I try to log in. Yeah, this install's really broken. Now I have to install drivers on this, which I have no idea how I'm going to do if I don't have the disk drive nor USB thumb drive support. So I was kind of stuck in a limbo, I didn't really know what to do for a while. Until I had the brilliant solution! I opened up my main Windows 98 machine, and I connected the hard drive from the server to that. And then I was able to boot, still with the exact same errors, but then at least my disk drive showed up. So I went ahead and copied the Windows 98 disk files to my hard drive, I also switched to my personal Windows 2000 rig and I burnt a CD of some drivers to install. And then I went ahead and copied them to the drive itself. Also, when I plugged in that drive to my 98 machine, I had to wait so long for those damn driver pop-ups to disappear, it was really bad. So now after I burnt the CD and copied the Windows 98 setup files to my hard drive, I switched everything back over to the server, tried again, started installing my drivers, but after all the drivers I installed, my disk drive was still not detected, and I kinda didn't know what to do. And then I realized, wait, I'm fucking stupid, I'm missing the chipset driver. So I went ahead and found some drivers for the Intel 855 GME chipset, and installed that on the machine. And it also took forever for the damn driver pop-ups to disappear, but I eventually got everything installed. But now with everything fully working, it's time to actually install some games. Shit, it's not hailing, is it? Oh, no, it definitely is. Okay.
Why don't we start off with some Microsoft Monster Truck Madness, shall we? Now, immediately upon loading into this, it wasn't looking very promising. Because during the video cutscenes, there was a constant screen artifacting at the top of the screen. Well, that wasn't a very good sign. The menus seemed fine, and I had no issues navigating them, but the artifacting continued as soon as I got in-game. Honestly, it didn't really affect the gameplay too much, it's just kind of annoying that I'd have a flashing artifact at the top of my screen. But the game itself ran pretty smooth, though. Yeah, I'm not really sure what was causing that, if it was a thing with Monster Truck Madness or my display driver I was using, I don't really know. Or if it was something with the settings, although I did tinker around with the settings later on off-camera, and it still doesn't seem to change anything. Since that didn't really go as well as we hoped, let's try a game that might have some better results. Let's try the original Half-Life. Now honestly, after trying Monster Truck Madness, I didn't have very high hopes for this, especially because when I went into the settings and tried to enable OpenGL, it straight up just wouldn't let me. Oh. Okay. I mean, I'm pretty sure it said OpenGL on the Intel drivers, but okay. Can we do Direct3D? We can do Direct3D. Oh, 1024 by 768 and it's super smooth. Nice, clean 60 FPS. So yeah, Half-Life 1 ran pretty well even with a higher resolution. And I was curious, I played for around 30 minutes, and I didn't experience a single artifact once. I also went back and checked my Intel drivers, and I made sure that OpenGL was actually properly enabled, which I don't think it was. And I tried Half-Life again with OpenGL this time, and I pretty much noticed the same, if not a little bit better performance. I don't know, either one felt pretty good to play. For the next game, I wanted to step it up a bit, so I thought why don't we try Quake 3 Arena. Quake 3 is harder to run than Half-Life 1, and I figured that if I could play Half-Life 1 at a decently large screen resolution, I thought Quake 3 should also probably run just fine. And it looks like I was right. I originally tried at 800 by 600 and it was buttery smooth. After that, I cranked up some of the settings and played at 1024 by 768 just to see if I could really get it to start lagging. And while I could feel that I was not getting as much frames as I could, it was still playable. So if I wanted to, I could play Quake at 1024 by 768 which I'm going to be honest, I wouldn't do anyway, but I could if I wanted to. Also, this server is really fucking loud. I mean, it makes sense because it's a server, but this was in my ear the entire time I was playing games. Seriously, annoying. Also, in this game, I didn't see a single bit of artifacting while I was playing. And I also played it for quite a while, just to be sure. For the next game I wanted to try, it was definitely an interesting choice. The next game I wanted to try was the original Far Cry, and I thought it might work. On the box, Far Cry's minimum requirements is Windows 98 SE with a 1 GHz Pentium 3 or Athlon, 256 megs of RAM with a 64 MB DirectX 9 compatible video card. And, well, we have a 1.6 GHz Pentium M, 512 megs of RAM, and from what I can tell, a kind of decent video card, when it's not artifacting at least. So I might as well give this a try, I mean, I got nothing to lose. After I installed it, I did not see any artifacting in the videos or anything like that that was playing. So far, it all seemed really well until I got in-game and oh my fucking god, it was horrendous. Oh my god, it's actually fucking running. Granted, oh, yeah, that's not good. What? What's up with the water, dude? The floor was black, the water wouldn't render, foliage wasn't rendering, whole bunch of rendering issues. But if you don't look at that, it's kind of playable. No, it's this is this is terrible. This is a terrible experience. I never want to do this again. But honestly, this is farther than what I was expecting. If I'm being honest with you, I didn't even think this game would even open. So that's kind of interesting to see. Some of you might have noticed earlier that I was playing without sound, and I kind of wanted to fix that. So I opened my main Windows 98 machine again and pulled the sound blaster live from that. Then I was stuck in driver hell for another hour. But after all of that was over, I tested it with some classic Passport.mid. This is my music. And then I went back and played some more Half-Life with sound this time. And welcome to the Black Mesa Transit System. This automated train is provided for the security and convenience of the Black Mesa Research Facility personnel. Honestly, it would have been a little bit more enjoyable if the server wasn't as loud as it is. But I'm still playing Half-Life with sound this time. Dude, what is this fucking bar that keeps popping up at the top of my screen? Yeah, I remember that driver hell for the sound card I was stuck in earlier? It also installed this creative launcher thing. This little menu right here looks awfully like the Windows Start menu. But yeah, that was pretty fun, but I think this is going to be about it. Thank you guys for watching this really odd and chaotic video. Like if you like, dislike if you hate servers that can somewhat game, or if you just hate me. I have a lot of really cool videos coming up soon, so definitely stay tuned. Also follow my Twitter for updates. I actually post there now.
What an absolute piece of shit. I love computers so much. 